Well, Joe and I have all our plating done up there on the main floor. You know, we're almost ready to start framing. But before we do that, we built a couple of model walls down here, and we want to show you in detail what it is we're going to build. Over here, we have a two by four wall. And over here, a two by six wall. They're both exterior walls, and they're both framed exactly the same. These are really our typical walls. Once you learn how to build these two walls, you can frame most anything you want to frame. So let's take a look at them in detail. Up here, we have a double top plate. These plates help hold the entire structure together. Underneath these plates, we nail both studs and these top cripples. These cripples take the weight from above and they transfer it down to this header. This header acts as a bridge over the window opening. It, in turn, is supported by a trimmer on each side. These trimmers come down and set on a rough sill. The rough sill leaves an opening for the window. The rough sill is kept to the proper height by the bottom cripples. The bottom cripples go on down to the bottom plate. And the bottom plate itself sits right here on the foundation, and that foundation supports the entire weight of the building. But one last thing now about this window frame. This whole structure is held together by these two king studs that are nailed, one on each side. They run from the top plate clear down to the bottom plate. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice looking at these headers is that they run throughout the building at exactly the same height. Well, carpenters maintain that height by use of a story pole. Let's take a look over here. The standard height for us where we frame is 6 foot 10 inches, right there. And once we know the size of the header, here we're using a 4 by 6, What's left over on this story pole is the length of our top gripple. Here we have a 3-0 window opening. That's carpenter talk for 36 inches. On this story pole, we've laid out for the rough sill. Well, what's left over on that story pole is then the length of the bottom gripple. That's simple enough. Now let's take a look over here. What if we use a 4 with 12 for a header? Take a look. We don't even have to use any top cripples. Well, what about if we have a smaller header and a taller window opening? That's where the story pole comes in again. We have a 4 with 4 header right here. What's left over on this story pole shows us the length of this top cripple. Now down here, we have a 4-0 window. That's 48 inches. Again, what's left over on this story pole is the length of this bottom cripple. Now, one more thing about window trimmers. You remember over here, we used a floating trimmer. Goes from the header clear down to the rough cell. That's the kind of trimmer that we use when we're nailing in wooden window frames. But here's another style. On this window, we used a continuous trimmer that runs from the header all the way down to the bottom plate. We normally use this kind of trimmer when we're nailing in metal window frames. There's more about that in the book. Now, let's take a look at these headers. It's pretty obvious that this header is one piece of wood, but that's not the only way to deal with headers. Over here, we took two pieces of two by six, and in between those two, we sandwiched a half inch piece of plywood and we spiked it all together. So what about a two by six wall? What do we do then? Well, here's an easy solution. On this window, we just laid this four by six flat and it works fine. Over here, we had a much larger opening. So we set our four by six up on edge, nailed on a two inch piece of furring that'll allow us to nail on our drywall. And that works fine. So now let's take a look at corners and channels. Well, here at the corner is one place we tie this building together. Here and up on top. And no, it's hard to see what's going on there, 
So let me hop down on this garage slab and look at a model. Here we have a three stud corner, very typical. The exterior partition comes into it. This nails into the corner and it leaves backing for drywall, both sides. Now, both walls are two by six. We do it a little differently. Again, a three stud corner with a two by four flat in here. Then the exterior wall comes up against that and nails together. There is a third solution to this called a two stud corner. You can nail a stud like this and a stud like this. That'll give backing to a wall coming into it and still leave backing for the drywall. The difference between this one and this one is that this one's stronger. The first one takes only two studs. At the top, we tie these walls together with a lap. We cut back the double plate on one and lap it over on the other. They go together like that and nail together with two 16 penny nails. Now here's another place that we have to nail our walls together. But this is a little bit different situation. This is an interior partition that nails into an exterior wall. Let's take a look at our model. Our exterior wall has three studs like this. They form what we call a channel. To that is nailed the interior partition. And then on both sides, we have backing for our drywall. At the top, where the plates come together, we left a gap in the exterior wall. And on the interior partition, we left it lap over. These two go together like this. And then you nail down through the top with 16 penny nails. Thank you.